If you get a Toyota 4x4, there's two roads to take. And just like the Tacoma, the RAV4 gives you two options. You can either go with the Sport or you can make it rugged. And today, we're gonna get rugged. going on guys Brian over here again and today I'm smiling because my RAV4 is smiling and if you have a RAV4 with a smile on you know you're looking at a RAV4 adventure so today we're gonna to be working with a 2021 RAV4 adventure gas model if there's a single car Toyota made specifically to remind you that it's time to go do something fun it's the RAV4 adventure because when you look at it right in the front it just has that grin like it wants to get you in trouble and with 3,500 pounds of tow capacity, which is 2,000 more than your average RAV4, and all non-painted black all around it, unlike its sport sister, you might just do that. This car has the simple engineering that Toyota's been known for for many years, the reliability, the durability, and the heritage of off-roading all mixed into one package. So today we're going to break down the car from the outside and work our way in. Okay, so starting from the front. On the RAV4 Adventure, like I mentioned, the first thing that separates it from all the other RAV4s is that smirk that it makes. And like all the other RAV4s, it has plenty of airflow in the front. But unlike the Sport Sisters, it has all non-painted black, which is going to really take the beating and scratches a lot better than they would on the XSE RAV4s and the Prime. It's a whole different bumper. It's got a lot of muscle to it. And what I really like is that thin silver lip that you would get in the sport trim is really pumped up. And this thing look like it, it looks like it's ready to go on the trails, get camping, you know, get the kids out kayaking, or just do a day trip out, you know, for the hikers. You have a big bezel for the fog light, which looks like it's pretty much identical to the fog light that came stock on my 21 Tacoma and full LED lighting in the front. So it's not a projector beam like the sport ones, but these refractors in the back will also just spray that light all over the road and it's gonna really help you see deer. Of course, you have the help of this nice big fog light with a projector that's gonna push even more LEDs out at nighttime to help you see what's going on. Being a newer Toyota, it does have Toyota Safety Sense so the car can actually see what's in front of it. There's a radar device behind the emblem, and there's also a camera right in the center with a light sensor, so you're getting features like lane departure alert with lane trace assist, pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, an adaptive cruise control, and automatic high beams that know when to go on and off. But since we're still talking about the exterior, another thing I like about the newer RAV4s is you have some muscle on the top here on the hood. Moving on to the side, all non-painted black all around and on the bottom which is really going to take the gravel nicely twigs branches sticks it's not going to scratch all up like the midnight black metallic painted surfaces that you're getting on the xse trim rav4s and look at this lunar rock paint this is a, a close cousin to the army green that my tacoma has it's what i call a cream color so there's not going to be any metallic finish on this this is like a some people call them putty colors but i like to say cream color it's gonna look more green during certain lightings and a little more gray during other lightings. The lunar rock is kind of like a moonstone-ish. That's where they got the name lunar. It's kind of like moon. Oh no, I've never been to the moon. Have you been to the moon? Let me know. I'd love to have somebody who's been to the moon comment on one of these videos. On a side profile, like I've mentioned in other RAV4 reviews, a lot of sharp edges now, not the soft, subdued, you know, curvy figure, the submissive energy that the little bunny rabbit from the last generation of the RAV4 was. Now we're looking sharp, fast, cut off, and just intense with the eyes kind of coming back to the side of the face and a lot of cheekbone muscle here. So it looks a lot stronger. And we have some inspiration from Lexus with the black on the taillights there. There's a lot of flair to the car. And with the wing in the back, pulling some of that black in from the window onto the back, mixing with the wheels. It's a very, very 
quick and powerful, you know, strong looking SUV. You have some chiseled lines coming like this. Everything is going outwards. You know, there's no lines in the design that stop you. It's all flying by. So I picture this car just going a little quick, you know, a little quicker than it should on the gravel trails because it can. Since I'm a wheels guys, onto the wheel. It is a flat black, non-polished, with a machine finish in silver. So you have some of the machine finish to play with the light. This reminds me of the Tacoma TRD off-road wheel, just a little less shiny, which is further gonna help prevent showing all those scratches like a painted, shiny, polished finish would. And that's gonna go very nicely with the non-painted fender liners here. So that's adding to that rugged look. Moving to the back, you have the continuity of the painted silver here, no matter what color you get, which is gonna just bring everything together. So you have that silver lip in the front, you got the silver lip in the back, and still more non-painted black, which is further gonna help take that beating when you take this thing out on adventures. But let's get a full view. This one has the blackout badge package, so you're gonna get a black Toyota emblem, and it's gonna say RAV4 in black. Super bright LEDs on the taillight that are going to shine very bright red so people can see you and they won't hit your precious RAV4. And color matching on the roof, which is going to be different than the XSC, which I like because it has more of a tank look. You know, it doesn't look like a sports car, it looks like a little tank. Let me know what you think of the exterior. We're starting to see this design in the taillights where they go horizontal and down, which we're starting to see now in the Highlander and even in the new Corolla Cross. But yes, to me, I interpret it as chiseled. It's muscular, but fast, which is an interesting combo. It almost is like a sprinter wearing a pair of rugged hiking boots. Kind of like me, I can run. Let's get on inside. We're working with a 2.5 liter four cylinder engine from Toyota. That's the A25A. FKS. It's naturally aspirated, no turbocharger, no supercharger, nothing making up for a lack of power. It's just regular Toyota engineering, nothing fancy with a geared transmission. So it's not going to have the CVT like you would on a hybrid. If you're going to get a CVT, you want to get one from a reputable brand like Toyota, but this is this is the simple old school way, so for those that still want it, you can still have it. Simple engineering. Airbox is right here, battery is right there, fuses, getting behind the headlights is easy. The radiator, if you ever need to service it, is going to slide right out like a Game Boy cartridge. You just have a dust cover here to help you get to your coil packs. Fuel rail is right up front, so hundreds of thousands of miles later when you need to service that, it's right there, easy to get to, which is just going to further lower your cost of ownership. All of our hoses are easy to see and get to, so you know even the owner can do a simple inspection and check for little leaks on things. That's the Toyota way. Now, how does this thing drive? Well, it's going to drive just like the RAV4 XLE, which is very similar to the RAV4 LE. You're just going to feel slightly different because of the size of the wheel. And I almost feel like the suspension's a little bit softer on this. So, yes, you have the lower center of gravity, which is new for the RAV4. It's a TNGA RAV4, which is Toyota New Global Architecture. So it's a whole new frame starting in 2019. It crashes better. It drives better. The visibility is great. I like how they took the mirrors and put them on the door. You have a little window here. It's a whole different car, just more oriented towards the outdoors. So if you're looking at the XSC or maybe even the XLE, but you have that outdoor lifestyle, you might want to consider this. They're a little harder to come by, but they might be worth the wait, especially if you could use some tow capacity. Next, let's talk about the cargo room. All right, so moving on to the back. There's a button just right of center. And it's not an electronic hatch on this one, which is fine, because if you just pull it forward a few inches, it comes up automatically, nice and high. Not gonna be height adjustable like on the automatic hatch. But let me give you a view of the space that you're working with. Lots of room. And just like in all my RAV4 reviews, the first thing that I appreciate that other people do is this nice low shelf, which is just above my knee. So it's easy to get things in. I don't have to do bicep curls to get stuff in there. It just makes the ease of use 
you know, a lot better and a lot bigger than other cars. Nice tonneau cover like on most RAV4s that clicks right in. It's a spring-loaded head so you can take it right out. One-handed. And the seats fold down really easy too. I might be able to do it from the back. Yep. There we go. So that's the cargo space in your RAV4 Adventure. Congratulations, you now have a little pickup truck. But let me get these seats back up, put the tonneau cover back in, and we'll check out the back row where the passengers and kids will go. All right, so here's what it looks like entering the RAV4 into the back. Just like the XSEs, you have this nice ribbon here, but instead of red, you got a beautiful orange with matching orange stitching. And it's a different energy to the interior because you're ha you have a like a charcoal gray mixed with ash which it really gets you going. You know, if you don't really care about colors, that's one thing, but this mixing and matching of colors here, you know, outdoorsy people, they like different colors like that. I mean, look at me, I'm an outdoorsy guy and I'm wearing green and orange. You know, I like different shades of gray. I think gray and orange go great together. It's almost interesting how readable outdoorsy people can be in the colors that we like. Lots of space, the seat is reclined all the way. In the more upright position of the seat, we're about that much different. But yes, you can recline it. And this little thermometer will let you know it'll pop up if it's not clicked in all the way. But I got lots of space. I got about seven or eight inches of space here. This seat is set up for somebody who's just under six feet. I'm just under six feet and I'm chilling. I'll say it. I couldn't be in a Corolla Cross or a Corolla four-door for much more than three hours. This, I could sit in this probably cross-country. Yeah, I'd want to get out every five or six hours for a break, but yeah, I could take this in cross-country. And I love that there's a decent-sized window, uh, about bigger than the headrest, behind the head. So I have all this space to see around me. It's a nice panoramic view. I don't feel trapped like in some other SUVs. Here's eye level. I'm comfortable. I'm reclined a little bit. I can see next to me and to the side of me. There's not a huge buffer between what's here and what's here. So um, it really reduces the claustrophobia, which is important to me and usually important to back passengers who are adults. I don't know what kids think about that, you know, if they think about little things like that. But here's my armrest. It's at just about the right height for most people with the cup holder. Now, if you got a cup here, you're kind of doing this, but it still works. And that goes right up. And then seat belt clips. The buckles, they don't disappear like they do on some of the other cars. They make it really easy to just do this one-handed. If it's easier, you're more likely to do it. And if you look close enough, you'll see this hexagonal design, which is gonna pop up in more areas, like on the speaker and also on your shelves and trays, which is a common theme in the RAV4s. Over here I have ventilation, not a separate temp, but I have a ventilation changer for the level and the direction here, and then two USBs. Just like in the pickup trucks and in most Toyotas, the all-weather mat underneath is one piece, and you have these separate channels here to help stop the water and slush and stuff from sliding all over the place. They really make it so you, you don't really necessarily have to upgrade them. I know a lot of people like to upgrade, but you're getting really good stuff out of the box. So yes, A plus for the back. I also like the lighter colors here to bring some light into the interior. When things are bright, you feel a little less claustrophobic. I'm not a claustrophobic guy, but I just like to talk about it since I'm in the back. And just like in the XSEs, we're seeing the silver here, which is breaking up the black, bringing things together, reminding you that you are in a machine. You're not in a luxury, long body car. You're in a machine that's gonna be out in the woods, you know, getting you out there away from all the craziness. Or you can get a little crazy in the woods. Anyway, let's go on to the front, check out what it's like in the driver's seat, and we'll break down some of the technology. And before I get inside of this RAV4 and see what the driver's seat looks like, I noticed two lines on the handle there, which tells me something. It means the car comes with a smart key. So as long as the key is on me or in my pocket, I can lock it like this. 
You heard it? And to unlock it, boom. If I leave the key in it, say it fell out of my pocket, it refuses to lock. And the screen in there will tell me there's a key detected. And also, say I left that in there and I have the old habit of locking it here. Unlocks again, so you're never stranded with the smart key. And lastly, there's actually a little lever here where the key slides out. This little key slides out like that. And what I can do is I can get in here with the slide out key and then I take the key fob and I hold it right against the push start button and it'll start right up. There's a video that I made on the key fob, a couple different tips, one that's actually involved with anti-theft that you might appreciate that I will leave in the comments down below. But here it is, the entryway to your 2021 Toyota RAV4 Adventure. I'm a sucker for orange. You can tell I like orange. I got orange laces on my boots. I got orange socks on. I got an orange watch. This time of year, orange is a very warming color for a lot of us outdoorsy people. And the way that stitching just blends in and the way I can see the same design on the back, you get the whole package and it just pops and it brings a lot of life, gets the heart rate up, gets you wanting to go and do things. So let me get inside this. I'll tell you what I think of it and we'll break down what some of these buttons are. Let's start it up. Beautiful, just like the Prime. Nice little shiny symbol that matches my steering wheel. I already feel good about it. So here is a view from the driver's seat of what we're working with. Now keep in mind, this is gonna share DNA with 90% of the RAV4s, except with the XLE and the LE, the seats will be a similar shape, they'll just be cloth. XLE premiums, you'll start to see the soft text material, just not the ribbon. And once we go XSE and Adventure, we're going to see the ribbon with the matching stitching. But it's great. I like how there's not a lot of shiny chrome. There's a lot more brushed chrome. Got a little shiny here, just to bring things together with the emblem. But places where there used to be a lot of shiny chrome, they're doing brushed, which is nice to reduce that sun screaming in my face. I don't know. Am I the only one that gets that? Let me know in the comments. Do you guys get sun bouncing off of chrome stuff and shooting in your face? I like that they reduced it. Big display here for the speedometer. And if I change to sport mode and eco mode, my speedometer will actually change. Oh, I'm sorry. Look at that, guys. Multi-terrain select. It's now here for sport mode and eco mode. So ready? Sport mode is red. Eco mode is green. Normal mode is white. On the adventure, I have rock and dirt and mud and sand. So when I go to rock and dirt, I get the rock design and it changes the way the all-wheel drive works for that type of terrain. That's normal mode and there's my mud and sand. Notice how it turns off the pre-collision and it turns off the vehicle stability control to help me with the sand. If you are gonna ride in the sand though, just do some reading about it first because you gotta adjust your tire pressure and it's really easy to get stuck. So. Take that advice. If you know anybody that's been stuck in the sand, please share it down below. Steering wheel with leather wrapping, the same as most RAV4s, something I really personally like. Big knobs that give me a good tactile feel here. Each click is going to be a separate change in temperature. It's giving you that rugged look just like in the pickup trucks. And the screen here, the first thing people ask about is does it fall down? Well, no, but it, it, it's distracting when you first meet the car. But when you sit the seat in the right position, and this is eye level, the screen blends right in with the dash. So you get used to it in a few days. This one doesn't have a sunroof. It's an optional thing. But you know what? When you're out in the woods, how long are you going to really be in the car? You know, I get my sport people in the XSC. They want their sunroof. They want their pano. But when you're driving an adventure... Do you really need the sunroof? Because you're just going to where you're going and you're getting out, right? You just want something that's gonna get you there in a lot more of a fun way. To me, the answer is no. 
but to each their own. And a regular old school mirror, non-auto dimming, which it would be nice to see auto dimming standard on all the cars, but with Toyota Safety Sense being the priority, I understand why we're not seeing these things standard yet. While everybody else is worried about blind spot being standard and auto dimming being standard, Toyota's making the Safety Sense standard and they're making it better every single generation. So to me, that's a plus because safety is really important. I've actually been in a car accident before as a passenger and it was really not a good experience. So to me, safety is number, number, number one. Utilitarian design here on the dash, squares and circles. It doesn't look like a luxury car because it doesn't want to be one. Simple Toyota buttons laid out in a line, just like a tank. And speaking of buttons, let's take some time to break down these buttons on a fast button overview. The pace is gonna be increased like on all my fast button overviews. So if it's a little too fast, you can actually edit the speed to the video or you can use the pause button. So you guys ready? Here we go. I have auto down windows all around and auto up. So I just do a hard push and it comes down or a hard pull and it comes up on all four windows which I'm super jealous of. I wish my truck had that. Window lock with a little light, door locks with little uh, nubbies for the lock position so you don't even have to look. Then I have the left mirror adjustment and the right mirror adjustment and neutral so that this doesn't do anything. Down below, I have floor mats that clip into the floor. Be sure you always clip them back in. And under here, I have my gas cap and my hood latch. Right up above, I can control the brightness to the speedometer. So that's a little speedometer with a light bulb so I can dim it down a little bit or make it at its brightest. Auto high beams, defrosting wipers, which will actually melt the ice off the wipers and a heated steering wheel, which is another thing that I just wish my truck had. Toyota, please get this in the Tacomas and get the TNGA going because this is great. And that's gonna heat the steering wheel from here to here on both sides. But I don't need it today because it is brisk, but it's finally warming up to about 50 degrees. And look, big outside temperature. I was just about there. Onto the steering wheel, it does telescope forward and back and go up and down. You just pull this little lever down and you can bring it closer or further away and change its level. Just remember you want it to be as far away as possible while being able to reach it so the airbag has room to inflate. Buttons on the steering wheel. I have arrows and a select and back button to operate the MID, which is short for multi-information display. I can answer and hang up phone calls, change the volume to the phone or the radio make voice commands. If I press and hold that, it'll do the Siri while I'm connected to Apple CarPlay. My cruise control, the sensitivity to the adaptive cruise control, lane departure alert, seek and track, and mode slash mute for the music. To set the cruise control, I just hit the cruise control button and set it, and I can change the speed here. If I press and hold it, it'll actually go to normal cruise control, and the little car symbol will go away, and the arrow goes to the left. That's the cruise control like the older cars that won't change its following distance. And by the way, there's three following distances here. The lane departure alert on the new RAV4 has lane trace assist, which will actually try to keep it in the center of the lane. For headlights, I have daytime running lights off, auto, which will sense when it's dark out, parking and on. Then I have my fog lights. And for the wipers, it has rain sensing wipers, which I can change the sensitivity to, low and high. And this is for the back. So I have off for the back wiper once in a while and on. And then up top, if I pull this towards me, it'll do the front windshield. If I push it away, it does the back windshield for the washer fluid. Onto the gauge cluster, I have the RPMs on the left, very easy to read. I have the fuel level on the very far right over here. And then I have my engine temperature down below. For the odometer and trip, I have a little stock and I can clear. And believe it or not, this 2021 has 5,200 miles, so it was a demo. It also tells me what gear I'm in, the outside temperature, and the odometer at a glance. And I have a nice digital display with a light-up needle here for my speed. And like I said, when I go into sport mode, it'll light up red. Eco mode will light up green, and normal mode will light up white, which is right down here. Eco, normal, and sport. And just to re remind you, the rock and dirt is here, and the mud and sand is here, and normal mode. And the button actually changes color with each different one. So just to show you, there's my rock and dirt, there's my mud and sand, and I push down for normal. So it's an easy reader. Remember, the arrows and the select and back button here will operate the different menus. So on the bottom I have the leaf menu to the left there that shows me different information about my fuel economy, so I'm using the up and down arrow. 
That's gonna show me my cruise control and my lane departure alert status. The music symbol tells me what song is playing. Vehicle information will give me my trip distance and time, as well as the all-wheel drive control, which will actually tell me how much power each wheel gets, which is awesome. And here's where I can change settings to the different safety systems. So I have lane trace assist, pre-collision system, blind spot monitor, which will have the orange light in the mirrors when people are in my blind spot. Rear cross traffic alert will beep at you when people are driving behind you in reverse. Roadside assist. And if I press and hold OK here, I can even schedule some maintenance. And to change the settings in any of these, you press and hold the OK button to change the sensitivity or press quickly to turn it off. See, and then it gives you a little warning symbol to remind you that your pre-collision system is off. But I'm gonna turn that back on. At least they give you the option. And then settings, right after settings is the warnings menu, which will give you messages or warnings if it needs pressure or service or fluids or whatever. It'll stay orange until you clear the message. So yeah, at a glance, it looks simple. The only complicated stuff is just learning your MID in the middle, but that only takes a couple days and then you're good to go, which is nice because Toyota doesn't want you spending a bunch of time trying to figure out what that is. We want to keep our eyes on the road, so there's no need to make this convoluted and hard to read. So A plus for that. Underneath the armrest, I have two USB plugs, no USB-C, with a little channel for the wire. Nice soft material here. Unlike the XSE, which has matching stitching here, there's a black stitching. Not a big deal. Uh, kind of weird that they did that. It makes me kind of feel like this might have been replaced, but I don't know. I mean, it has 5,000 miles on it. I don't see anything happening to this in 5,000 miles, but it would have been nice to see matching orange stitching, but that wouldn't even come close to making me not want to buy the car. That is not a big deal at all. Maybe it's one less thing to get dirty from all these arms. Maybe that's why they did it, all the arm sweat from being hiking. Maybe the orange would turn brown really fast. Maybe they're thinking way ahead of us. Here's a closer view of the seat. So you have that hexagonal design coming all the way up and it's perforated. Now, perforation kind of tells me there's a chance that the seats are, are gonna be chilled, which yes, they are. They're heated and chilled. So I have three levels of heat on each seat and three levels of AC and it's a ventilated seat. The glove box is a good size with your books about the Toyota and the door storage is good. You got a bottle holder and a little bit of storage there and a nice shelf. And this material here is not actually a uh, slick material. It's a little, it's a little, uh, it's kind of like rubbery. It's rubberized and the same thing down here is like rubberized. So it helps things not slide around. Onto the shifting area, like I said, I got the rock and dirt, which changes the color, push down for normal, and then mud and sand, which will turn a sand color, push down for normal. I have snow mode, which will take off in second gear to reduce the wheel slip, and decline assist control, which will help the car actually descend steep hills on its own, so you won't have to brake. Eco normal and sport, which you can do while moving, so that'll actually boost your gas economy. This is gonna be a blend, and that's gonna give you more power. So you get to do that while moving. Just changes the way the transmission revs out. Parking brakes electronic now, which will release on its own when you take it out of park and reapply when you put it into park. If you push this, it actually lets you stay and drive, come to a stop and take your foot off the brake. You have to be buckled up for it, but I'll show you real quick. So if I push this, I get the little green symbol here. And there's gonna be a gold one right here that tells me I can take off the brake. So check this out, I'm in drive. It's gold, right? Yep, it's gold. Take the foot off the brake, it chills. Then I can go forward like a foot, come to a stop. The gold pops up, take the foot off the brake. Great for the drive-throughs. Don't forget to put it in park when you're done driving. So that's everything here. I got nice storage behind the shifter, which is easy to get to. So I can, most people will put their phone here. It's not a wireless charging system. Of course, if you get upgraded packages, you'll be able to get that. And then I have my USB plug for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto and a 12 volt plug for accessories. In the bad weather or even on the gravel trails, I can turn off the traction control to get full power to the wheels. And then for the climate control, it looks weird at first when you're new to Toyota, but you have two knobs for two different temps. I can synchronize it by pushing this. 
and control the whole car from the driver knob. And below each symbol is its button. So I have fan speed up and down, air direction change, AC and recirculate are close to each other here, which is great for the hot weather when you need the AC really cold. And this kicks off the back rows climate control, which is nice. Eco heat and cool will actually activate when you put it into eco mode. And that makes the heat a little less hot, the AC a little less cool, and it squeezes out a couple more miles per gallon. But what's nice is I can be in sport mode and even use the eco heat and cool mode. So you don't have to be in eco mode to use the eco heat and cool. So you might be able to squeeze a couple miles per gallon while in sport mode, who knows? Depends on your driving habits. Front and rear defrost are right next to each other. If I put an auto, it's gonna be like my house's climate control, and then I can turn the system off here or resume it by just turning the fan up a little bit. Above the climate control, I have the hazards, easy to see. They're not gonna light up like on some cars, but at least they're easy to get to. And on all four vents, I have a wheel to control the amount of air that comes through. So I can slide that down for no air or more air on all four, which is nice. So you can change the temperature on each side and the amount of airflow. So everybody will be comfortable. We're all spoiled as Toyota people. We want our dual zone climate. Let me know if you like dual zone climate. Is it just another thing to break or is it worth it? To me personally, it's worth it. Complicated stuff like that. I trust Toyota with it. Onto the screen. We have four different buttons here with the power and volume for the radio. Four different buttons here with the seek, the tune and scroll for the radio. This will be your phone menu if you're connected to Bluetooth. That's your n tune suite. This goes through the songs, but the more important buttons are here. So in the home screen, which we're in, you can see your different information all at once. There's the menu where I can change some settings. So I can change my clock in the menu, I can change my language, I can even change the color theme to the interior. I can turn the beep on and off. So that's nice. Now if I go to menu, display, and screen off, I can turn the screen off and still listen to music, which is great for nighttime. If you go to voice, you can even train it to know your voice. And I can customize the home screen, change the way it looks, which is great. On the audio source, I can bounce between the different sources. That'll light up if I have an old iPod or MP3 player. And then once you're in a certain setting, you can tap and hold to set up to 36 different presets, which is great. And then map. See, this one doesn't have the in-house navigation. So what you would do is if you have a smartphone, you just plug it in and you'll get the map that's on your phone. So you can use Apple Maps, Google Maps, Waze. I like Waze. Apple Maps has come a long way, but Waze is cool. And then some of the Toyotas will use Scout GPS Link. Let me know what you think about Scout GPS Link, guys. Have you used it? Did it work good? Tell us down below. So that's the basics of the screen. Once you do it a few times, it's fine. It's like getting a new phone. We talked about this. Sunglass case with a soft backing so you can put lenses in and you get safety connect on all new Toyotas for the first year unlimited miles. If you push it once, somebody will talk to you. You push it two times in a row, it sends out an SOS signal. If you get into a crash and the airbags go off, it actually sends help to your location. Very valuable. I've had a couple people that needed to use this. Individual light buttons here and you can set it to go on with the door or you can turn all the lights on all at once. Lights with the mirrors as well. With a slider to keep that sun out of the awkward place and getting into your eyes. So that's the basics on the button breakdown. Just wanted to show you another view of the interior here. That's a wrap, guys. I tried to cover everything. I tried to keep it simple. I like the modern design here. You know, that the edges and lines here are really going with the overall hexagonal design that we have here. We're seeing that continuity. Things are going over, down, and out. And it, it's almost like the similar design in the headlights and the taillights. So let's close up this video and finish off with some pictures. So there it is, the 2021 Toyota RAV4 Adventure Grade in Lunar Rock with the Moonstone and orange interior. It's a really cool car. And it's very nice when we get an adventure in because they're hard to come by, at least in this area. I'd love to hear if you see a lot of adventures where you live and where you're from, but you know right away with that smirk. 
Hope this video helped. Let me know if there's anything else that you need me to cover or if there's another car you'd like to see. With the chip shortage, we're really running out of cars up here in New York. So even if I get something used that's a 2021, I want to cover it because I want to be able to help you guys see what these cars are like. At least from my perspective, I've been with Toyota for a little over five years. And I try to make the video so you can see what it would be like in person. And that's it, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks again for your support. Peace.